Okie doke. Okay. So something I need to say before we um, before we start the lesson today. On Friday, we had a problem in the noon class. We had a couple of people bomb in on the Zoom session. So I've had to disable the chats for all sections um, because it's a universal setting across all Zoom meetings. So if you need to ask a question, please do so, but you're going to have to unmute yourself and just ask it verbally. Um, because I had to, they had, we had a couple of students come in and harass students over the chat function. So we, do, we got rid of that. And in that class, I instituted a weight room. Um, I don't see any reason to institute a weight room unless I have to, because it kind of delays the start of class. But I have to ask you to please not share the course link or password with anyone. Um, that's against college policy because they're not registered for this class, so they shouldn't be in the Zoom session. Um, and that, as I saw on Friday's class, was, was extremely disruptive because they harass students, um, other students in class. So please do not share this class link or password with anybody. Okay, any questions about schedule? Okay, so you may not, depending on how far we get today, you may not have to watch that mini lecture because we we might be covering that in class today. All that will be left will be a little bit of a, we'll be doing some journal entries next time on that one topic, but um, I think we should be able to get through it. Okay, so let me go right to our notes. I figure with the test you had enough going on, if we can, if we can avoid having to add one more thing to your list of thought, things to do. I mean, Accounting takes a long time. I know it does, about nine hours a week um, to be able to get through all that's necessary. It's, it's uh, labor intensive. Um, once you learn it, you've got it, but it's labor intensive. And by the way, these first three chapters are absolutely critical. You'll be golden the rest of the semester if you learn how to do journal entries in these few, first few chapters. If you don't, it can make the rest of the semester really painful. So you're going to want to put the time and elbow grease into learning how to do journal entries, rules of debit or credit, what type of an account is in these early chapters, and then the rest of the semester will go a lot more smoothly. If you don't, then it can be quite painful. So please put the time in, in these first few chapters. Don't leave things to the last minute. Study as we go along day to day. Otherwise, it'll be very difficult for you. Okie doke. So let's take a moment to give us some perspective on what we've learned in the class so far. If you remember, financial accounting is an information system in which we analyze, journalize, and then post business transactions, and then we report them on the financial reports we call financial statements. And you remember those, the income statement, statement of stockholders' equity, and then, I'm sorry, retained earnings, and then uh, the balance sheet. And those financial statements help people outside the business, like investors and creditors, make decisions about businesses. So in chapter one, we learned how to prepare those financial statements. And in chapter two, we learned how to record transactions that affected the balance sheet. Now those were primarily financing and investing activities. Financing activities, the financing type activities would be how we get money other than day-to-day -day operations. We could borrow it, and that's called debt financing, or we can sell stock, and that's called um, equity financing. So in this chapter, we're gonna be learning how to record the day-to-day -day activities of running a business, and we call those operating activities. So, let me pull it here. Operating activities are the day-to-day -day functions involved in running a business. Unlike investing and financing activities, which occur infrequently and typically produce long-lasting results, operating activities occur, sorry, zoom out there, occur day-to-day -day regularly, and they have a shorter duration of effect. So they would include things like buying goods in order to resell them or paying for supplies, you're buying supplies in order to use them to run your business, and then paying for them and maybe paying for employees and advertising and utilities, and then later selling the services or goods that you've bought to the customers, and eventually collecting cash from your customers. Those four steps are called the operating cycle. So the operating activities are your primary source. It's where you 
earn your revenues and incur expenses. And that will help you determine if you've earned a profit or a loss. If you remember, we can see that on our income statement. So the income statement summarizes the financial impact of those operating activities undertaken by the business. Let's take a closer look at this. Okay, so we've got, you remember, we've got the name of the company, the name of the financial statement, and then the time period covered. You always have to put the time period that we're talking about. Then we've got two parts, revenues and expenses. And then we total our revenues, total our expenses, and subtract to get our profits or our net income. Net income, profits, earnings, they all mean the same thing. What I wanted to bring up here, if you already know this, so what I wanted to bring up here and point out is when we talk about the month ended September and we list the revenues, those are revenues that are earned in September. If you've earned the revenue in August or October, they belong in the August or October income state not on the September income statement. The only thing that should go as a revenue on the September income statement is revenue that you earn in September. Same thing with the expenses. Expenses are costs of doing business in order to help you generate the revenues. The only thing, the only expenses we should see here are expenses that pertain to the month of September. So employee wages for September, rent for September, utilities for September, insurance coverage for September. Because we, what we want to isolate is how much, rep, um, how much net income or profit did we make in September, right? So we wanna make sure we're keeping the time periods consistent. So total revenues of 12,000 minus total expenses of 10,000 give us net income or profit of 2,000. If we had expenses that were larger than the revenues, then instead of a net income, we would have a net loss. Well, just below here, it says, notice that the revenues and expenses on the income statement report the financial impact of the activities in just September, in just the current period. If you provided the goods or services the month before or the month later, they should be reported in that month not in this current period. So the income statement reflects the current period, the balance sheet. Those activities, they continue to have a financial impact beyond the current period. We're gonna learn more about this in chapter four, but balance sheet accounts are considered permanent accounts because their, their um, impact extends beyond the current period. Let me give you an example. On September 30th, the amount of cash you have in the bank at the end of that day will be the amount of cash that you wake up with on October 1st. It rolls over from one period to the next. The amount of debt you have, you know, the mortgage, for example, that you have on September 30th is the same mortgage you have on October 1st. But income statement accounts are considered temporary because they pertain to one accounting period at a time. Any questions so far? Okay, so let's go to the next page. And we're gonna skip around here just a little bit. Let's start at the top with revenues and expenses. These are um, just a review of what you've already heard or learned, but we're going to actually more fully define and refine um, our understanding of what revenues and expenses are. Revenues are amount the business charges or earns when it provides goods or services to customers. A revenue is reported when the company fulfills its promise to transfer control of a good or a services, uh, a service to a customer. The word report or recognize, let's see, let's spell that right, right? Uh, or you might, or the word report are all gonna mean the same thing. A revenue is recognized or reported when the company fulfills an obligation to transfer control of the good or service, regardless of when the customer pays you. In other words, cash doesn't determine when we record a revenue. It's whether we deliver the goods or services. And with expenses, 
these are costs of doing business incurred to generate the revenues in the period covered. The word incur means to receive the benefit of the cost. So the reason you have these expenses, the reason you have these costs of doing business is to help you generate the revenue. You need advertising. You need your employees to work for you. You need a place to operate. So you might have rent expense. You might have utilities expense because you need to have electricity, a phone, etc. So these are what we determines whether we record an expense or not is did it uh, benefit us? Did we receive the benefit in the period covered by the income statement? Net income, that's just a calculation, revenues minus expenses. One more thing, time period assumption, and then we're going to focus on revenues. The time period assumption, you've already been using it. It's the assumption that allows the long life of a company to be reported in shorter time intervals, like a year at a time or a month at a time. So the fact that we're reporting net income for noodle cake for the month of September is an example of um, the time period concept. We don't want to wait till the business ends to determine whether we made a net income or profit. We want regular reports. So the accounting period assumption says, okay, you can take the long life of a business and divide it up into sections, months or quarters or years, and issue those reports to determine whether you were profitable. Now, this cash basis of accounting, we're not going to be following this. This is actually not in accordance with GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, or on international standards. This method says you record revenue only when you get paid. And you record an expense only when you pay for something. Well, you could be a really devious person and totally misrepresent the position of the company by failing to pay your bills. If you only record an expense when you pay for a bill or pay for something, then you could really hold your expenses low by not paying for things. So because of that, the app doesn't allow us to use this method because it can be manipulated and then investors and creditors would engage in or make decisions based on bad information. So that's why I crossed it out here just to emphasize that this is not in accordance or acceptable under GAAP. What is acceptable? The accrual basis of accounting. Okay, this method reports revenues when goods or services are provided. We call that, um, or perform, we call that satisfying the performance obligation. You're obligated to do something when you satisfy that obligation, when you, when you deliver the goods or services, that's when you report a revenue. Whether or not cash is exchanged, you report a revenue when it's earned, when you deliver the goods or services. And you record and report expenses when they help you generate the income, when you receive the benefit of that cost, like what we talked about here. When you receive the benefit of that cost and it helps you generate that income. Now, as we mentioned, according to GAAP and the International Financial Reporting Standards, this accrual basis is the only acceptable method. So all companies use this. Okay, so let's talk about this revenue recognition principle and this five-step model. So we just said that revenues, that the seller should report revenues when it provides the goods or services. When we fulfill the performance obligation. Now, why do we need five steps to do that? I oh, really don't. We're going to focus in, in this class, on step E, or the fifth step. If you were in intermediate accounting, there are all these little issues that can come up in all these other steps. But for us, we're going to focus in on E. The first step was to identify what the contract is between the parties, between the buyer and seller, and then what is the the seller supposed to do? What was their performance obligation? What did the seller promise to do? And then thirdly, determine the transaction price, the amount that the seller is entitled to. And then you have to split the transaction price to the various performance obligations because maybe they're supposed to do more than one thing. Maybe you might have a bundled service agreement where from a landscaper, the landscaper agrees to, um, let's say, mow the lawn every month and to sell you some shrubs. 
well, there's two things that he promised, so you have to take the price and split it up. We're not going to get that fancy. I'm going to show you an example of that, but we're going to focus in on reporting revenue when you deliver the goods or services, which means when the performance obligation is satisfied. That's when we will report a revenue. So it sounds like it's really simple, but actually it can become complicated. So we're going to look at this part here, and then we'll do a problem. So we're going to use the worksheet. Okay, so notice the five-step model does not re refer to receiving cash. That's not how we determine whether revenue was earned or not, whether it should be reported or not. It depends on whether goods or services are delivered. So what are the possible circumstances? The first one is you could get paid before you satisfy the performance obligation, before you deliver the goods or services, like airlines. We pay them ahead of time, right? Magazine publishers, insurance companies. They get paid before they deliver the goods or services, like NCCC too, right? We had to pay our tuition before the semester began. When cash is received before the goods or services are provided, like all those examples, or even a gift card, we'll increase cash. But we can't call it a revenue because we didn't do anything yet. We have to delay or defer recording a revenue. We actually owe our customers the work, so we call that or the goods. So we call that a liability. The account name would be deferred revenue. Defer means to delay. So deferred revenue is revenue that has been delayed. We're not going to record it as a revenue yet. Why? Because we didn't fulfill the obligation. We didn't deliver the goods or services. So we put it in a liability account called deferred revenue. It's also called unearned revenue sometimes too. If you hear that term, it's the same thing. Unearned revenue, deferred revenue mean the same thing. Once you perform the service or deliver the goods, then we take it out of deferred revenue and put it in regular revenue. And we'll learn about that in chapter three. Sometimes you get paid at the same time you deliver goods or service. A certain good service. Well, that's perfect. You would increase cash and you would increase a revenue at the same time. What if you deliver the goods or service, but you don't get the cash comes after. Well, that's when we sell on account, right? And we use the accounts receivable account. If we get, if we deliver the goods or service, we can record a revenue, but we can't increase cash. So instead, we'll increase accounts received. So let's take a look at our worksheet. And we'll go through all of these. Okay, so the first problem here deals with Bill's Extreme Bowling Incorporated, which operates several bowling centers. And below, these are the July activities. So A through D, these are July activities of Bill's Extreme Bowling. They want to know if a revenue should be recognized or recorded in July. Remember, recognized and recorded mean the same thing in accounting language. Should we record a revenue in July? Remember, our question is, did we earn it in July? Did we provide the goods or services in July? Did we satisfy that performance obligation? So let's go through these one by one. Bill's Extreme Bowling collected $12,000 in cash from customers for services related to games played in July. Did we deliver the goods or services in July? Yes. Yes, we did. So we should record revenue in July. The question always comes back to, did we deliver the goods or services? Did we satisfy the performance obligation? How about this next one? Bill's Extreme Bowling. Bill, I hate when they use the same word together. This is an invoice. They're sending them a document telling them they owe money. Bill's Extreme Bowling 
sent an invoice or bill to a customer for $250 for a party that was held at the center on the last day of July. But the customer is not going to pay Bill's Extreme Bowling until August. Should we record a revenue in July? Was it earned in July? It was earned in July. Yes, it was earned in July. Remember, when, when you receive the cash, doesn't matter. We record revenue in the period that it's earned. And when you're doing your homework problems, you're going to have one very similar to this. You have like four right in a row that are just like this. Always read carefully. Sometimes I tell students to even read it out loud to themselves because that slows you down a little bit and helps you focus on the words better. The dates are so important in accounting, so make sure you always refer back to the time period that they're asking about. Okay, so in A and B, we would record a revenue in both of those cases. Remember, they're asking you just about revenue, and we could because the revenue was earned in July. How about C? The men's and women's bowling leagues gave Bill's Extreme Bowling advanced payments totaling $1,500 for the fall season that starts in September. Did you earn revenue in July? No. Nope, not in July. Zero dollars revenue earned in July. Now we will record something, but we won't be recording a revenue because we did not earn it in July. We'll record the fact that we'll owe our customers the right to bowl starting in September. Remember, they're just asking about revenue. And last one, Bill's Extreme Bowling received $1,000 from credit sales made to customers last month. And so he's receiving money from customers to whom you made sales last month. Should Bill's Extreme Bowling be recognizing revenue of $1,000 in July. You know, I, I, if someone spoke, I could barely hear it. If, if you can put your, please put your mic up. Should Bill's Extreme Bowling record any revenue for that $1,000 in July? What is it, credit sales? Credit oh, sales credit, what? Um, let's say credit services. Credit, they, oh. they provided them last month. So no, in this case, no. No, you're to... right. They, they should have recorded it last month, right? In yeah. June. Yeah. So if you made the sale, if you delivered the goods or services in June, that's when you should record the revenue in June. So we will be recording something, but they're just asking about revenue. So we would say, nope, no revenue for C because you won't earn that until September and there and several months afterwards and no revenue for D because you should have recorded the revenue in June. The determining factor as to when we record revenue is when did you deliver the good or service? When you deliver the good or service, that's the time you record the revenue. Are there any questions with that? It can get a little tricky. Yeah, but it is. Yeah. Okay, well now we're gonna learn how to do the journal entries for those four situations. But before we do, we have to go to um, learning outcome 3-3 and learn the, uh, the rules for recording um, revenues and expenses using debits and credits. So, when we were back in chapter two, we said the rules of debits and credits were based on the accounting equation. Assets are on the left side of the equal sign of the equation. So we record assets or we increase assets on the left or the debit side. Liabilities and stockholders equity are on the right side of the equal sign the equation. So we increase them on the credit or right side. To decrease, we would do the opposite. We would credit assets and debit liabilities and stockholders. 
assets on the left side, increase on the left, or debit, liabilities and equity. On the right side of the equation, increase on the right side of the credit side. Now, the problem is, there's no words um, revenues and expenses in here. So how do we determine what our rules are for revenues and expenses? Well, if you remember, stockholders' equity has two parts, right? Common stock and retained earnings. Common stock and retained earnings have to follow the same rules as stockholders' equity. Decrease by debiting, increase by crediting. The common stock account represents the investment of the stockholders. They give us money, we give them stock. The retained earnings account means all the accumulated profits or net income over the years that the company's been around, less the dividends, because this refers to earnings that we kept or retained in the business. Now, the way we figure out our earnings or profit is revenues minus expenses, right? So revenues and expenses have to follow the rules of retained earnings. They're subsets of retained earnings. Because revenues increase our earnings or net income, we'll record them on the credit or plus side. Expenses decrease our earnings or net income, so we're gonna record those on the debit or the left side. What I tell students is sometimes it might be easier to remember a phrase. So what you can do is think of the three R's. Revenues are recorded on the right. Revenues recorded on the right. And that will help you remember um, how to record revenues. Some accounts like cash go up and down, both increase and decrease all the time. But revenues, for the most part, when you record them, you'll be increasing revenues. It's only when you have a return, for example, um, if someone is returning something that they bought or you give them a special discount, those are the only times you would record it in the debit position. And expenses are always debited. It's rare that you would credit an expense unless perhaps you're getting a return, you're processing a return of some sort or getting a discount. Okay. So now let's take those rules, revenues recorded on the right, or credit revenues and debit expenses, and let's record these transactions. Okay. So in our first one, Bill's Extreme Bowling collected $12,000 from customers related to services, related, I'm sorry, for services related to games played in July. Remember, every transaction involves a giving and a receiving. So what did Bill's Extreme Bowling receive in transaction? Cash. Right? Revenue. revenue. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's credit. credit. I'm sorry, yeah. It's, um, they received cash, right? They collected cash. And cash is an asset. So we increase assets by debit. So we'll put the account to be debited on line one, cash, because that's what the company gave. I'm sorry, received, I'm sorry. And what they gave was services. They earned revenue. So we'll call that service revenue, and that will be credit. So cash that will increase the asset, and then service revenue is a type of, type of stockholders' equity account, and that will increase stockholders' equity. Retained earnings, and which is part of stockholders. Revenues recorded on the right or credit side. Any questions? It's confusing. It is. It is. You might want to keep this that handy, you know, nearby. Mm -hmm. Just remember the revenues and expenses have to follow the same rules. Revenues increase, equity expenses decrease. Okay, next one. Uh, Bill's Extreme Bowling sent a bill to a customer for $250 for a party held at the center on the last day of July. And all of you said that they earned $250 of revenue, but they're not getting paid. So what account do we use to keep track of how what people owe us? Like, um, uh, account payable, something. 
receivable. Yeah. Oh, receivable, like, receivable. That's Sorry. okay. That's okay. Accounts receivable. When it's accounts payable, you have to pay it in the future. It's a debt. Accounts receivable means you're going to receive it in the future. And so if we want to increase the asset account, we'll debit it. So we'll debit accounts receivable. Say people owe us money. There's an increase in the amount our customers owe us by 250. And because we delivered the goods or services, we can increase service revenue. That will increase the stockholders' equity as well. Retained earnings and stockholders' equity as well. So in situation A and B, we said to record revenue and we did here. We increased service revenue. Now in situation C, Bill's Extreme Bowling got paid. They received $1,500, but they didn't do anything. Well, if they didn't deliver any goods or services, we can't call it a revenue. You said, don't record any revenue, but we do have to record something. We have to record the fact that we promised our customers that they can bowl for the fall season. And so that will be, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And what is the name of that? So that's called a service deferred, revenue. It, deferred it? revenue. It'd be, we're going to, it's a liability account, which means we owe our customers, whatever it is, in this case, the right to bowl in the future. So we're going to do two things. We're going to record what we received. We received cash is an asset of 1,500 because we increase assets by debiting and we have to delay calling it a revenue because we haven't earned it yet so we'll put it in deferred revenue the word defer means to delay and the deferred revenue account is a liability we'll increase that by crediting when they begin to bowl in September and then October and November and so on, we will take a portion of that 1,500 out of deferred revenue and call it regular revenue once, once they begin bowling. Just like after you finish the semester, the college can take out of deferred tuition whatever you've paid in and call it tuition revenue because they've earned it, they've provided you with the, you know, the opportunity to learn. A lot of companies use this. Um, gift cards is an example. Um, airlines, Sabres tickets, Bills tickets, concert tickets, where you pay ahead of time and the company gets the cash, but they can't say it's revenue yet until the concert is held or the game is held. And once they've done that, then they can take it out of this liability account because they delivered the good or service and they can put it into service revenue. Does this make sense? Any questions on this one? No, probably. Okay, our last one is, Bill's Extreme Bowling received $1,000 from credit sales made to customers last month. And for this one, you said we should not be recording revenue in July. We should have recorded it in June. So. Let's assume that we recorded it in June. We recorded service revenue in June for $1,000. If our customers did not pay us in June, what account would we have used to keep track of how much they owed us? Account payable. Receivable. Just like we did here. It would have looked just okay. like this one in June. That's okay. No, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're offering, um, uh, offering answers. It would have looked just like this in June, except it would have been for $1,000. So now these customers from June are paying us. We already recorded the revenue. All that's happening now is we're getting paid. Remember, every transaction has a giving and receiving. What Bill's received was cash of 1,000. So we'll, increase, we'll record an increase to cash. We cannot record a revenue because we did that in June. What we're going to do is lower the amount 
that our customers owe us. We're going to credit the asset. Crediting reduces it, right? We're going to credit the asset accounts payable because our customers are paying us off. They would want us to reduce the bill, right? For example, if you owed money to the college for your tuition and then you paid some of it, you would want the college to reduce your bill. That's what we're doing here by crediting accounts receivable. We don't want to record more revenue because it was already recorded in June. All we're doing is recording the customer's payment, an increase to cash and a decrease to accounts received. There's a set of problems, as I mentioned, and problems just like this that will give you more practice with this. Any questions? Okay, well, let's take a look at it now from the perspective of expenses. We're gonna go back to our notes for a moment. And we're going to learn when to record expenses. We learned when and how to record revenues. Now we're going to learn when and how to record expenses. The expense recognition principle used to be called the matching principle. It states that expenses are recognized, which means recorded in the same period as the revenue to which they relate, not necessarily in the period the cash is paid for them. We recognize or record revenues when we receive the benefit of whatever we're paying for. When you receive light and heat, you have incurred utilities expense. When your employees work for you, you have incurred wages expense. When you place an ad in the newspaper and it runs, you have incurred advertising expense. So when you use up or receive the benefit of a cost, then we call it an expense. Okay, so what if you pay cash before you receive the benefit of the cost? It says here that it's common for businesses to pay for something that provides benefits later in the future. For example, supplies may be purchased this month, but you don't use them till next month. Well, under this principle, the supplies, when you buy them, should re be recorded as an asset. You haven't received the benefit of them yet. They're a future benefit. Remember, assets are future benefits. So you would call them the asset supplies. But then when you use them up, they become expenses. And you'll learn how to do this in the next chapter, but we would take them out of the supplies account and call them supplies expense. The same thing is true for insurance. If I pay for insurance today and it covers starting, I get coverage starting in October until the end of next September, I can't call it insurance expense today because I'm not gonna even benefit from it until next year. I'm gonna benefit from it one month at a time. So I'll call that prepaid insurance expense. So whenever you see a prepaid, this is an asset. You have the right to that, whatever it is you're paying for. Why? Because you paid for it. You have a right to coverage by insurance. Why? Because you paid for it. It's a future benefit. If you cancel your policy, you get your money back. You have a, if you pay rent ahead of time, more than one month ahead of time, you have a right to occupy that space. Why? Because you paid for it. It's an economic resource until you've used it up and then it becomes an expense. So initially recorded as an asset. Now, what about if you pay for the expense at the same time that you've received the benefit? So your employees work for you this week and you pay, for, you pay their wages next Monday. Uh, then that would be um, wages expense for the month of September. So if you benefit and pay for it right away, maybe you go to the newspaper and you pay for an ad today that will be run tomorrow you're receiving the benefit in the same period that you paid for it. Call it an expense. Reduce your cash and call it an expense. 
what if you pay for whatever expense it is later? Maybe you have an attorney that works for you all month and then he doesn't bill you until the end of the month. So you don't pay him at all until after you get his bill. Well, you've incurred legal expense all month. And when he sends you the bill, you have to record that as an expense during the month that you receive his advice. But if you're not gonna pay for it right away, you can credit accounts payable. Sometimes bills aren't due right away, right? They're maybe not due for two weeks or so. Maybe you receive electricity all month. You get the September utility bill, but it's not due until October 15th. Well, call it utilities expense, but put it in the payable if you're not going to pay it right away. And so we record expenses when we receive the benefit of the cost in the same period to which the revenue relate, they're, they're related to the revenue. So we've only got about seven minutes left. So just like with the other class, we'll do these. And then the next time we come in, we'll do the journal entries related to the expenses and we'll go on to another problem. Okay, so in this one, we're dealing with Bill's Extreme Bowling again, but we're talking about expenses. Okay. So the following are July activities. So all these things happen, the activities happened in July, but what they want to know is, should an expense be recorded in July? And if so, indicate the amount. Okay, so during July, Bills paid $1,500 to plumbers for repairing a broken pipe in the restrooms in July. Would, did I receive the benefit in July of that, of that work? Looks like they did. Yeah, they did. They repaired it in July and you paid them in July. This would be like B here. You pay for it the same month that it, you receive the benefit of that cost. So there would be a maybe a repairs expense account that we would use and we reduce cash. Good. Okay. There's the B here has actually two parts to it. When you do this for homework, you'll notice it's one big long sentence, but there's really two parts. In B1 here, Bill's Extreme Bowling paid. $2,000 for the June electricity bill. Well, he paid it in, in, in July because they're saying this is July's activities. But did you receive the benefit of that electricity in July? No. No, it was in June. So we cannot record an expense for this. We will record something else, but it's not going to be an expense. When should we have recorded the electricity for June. In June. In June, exactly. In June. You record the expense in the month that you receive the electricity or the benefit of whatever you're talking about. Good. In part two here, it says Bill's Extreme Bowling received the July bill for 2500 which will be paid in August. So they're not going to pay it until next month. But did you receive the benefit of that electricity in July? Should we recognize it in July? Yes. We should. Yes. Remember with expenses, we ask ourselves, did you receive the benefit of that cost in the period that we're talking about? And yes, this is the July bill for July electricity. So if we're talking about July, record it as July utilities expense. Good. And our last one here, Bill's Extreme Bowling paid $5,475 to employees for their work in July. Did you receive the benefit of that cost, their labor in July? Yes. Yes. Okay, so that one, again, would be an expense. So for all of these, except for B1, we would record an expense in July. In A, it might be repairs expense. In B2, it might be utilities expense. In C, it would be salaries and wages expense. 
what would you credit? Because remember, expenses are debited to record them. Right? We record expenses by debiting. So what would you credit? It depends. If it says you paid it, you credit cash. If it says you're not going to pay it till August, put it in a payable, uh, accounts payable. Okay. While you're finishing up writing that down, I'm just going to double check to see if I missed anyone coming in. I want to make sure I give credit to everybody who's here. Oh, I almost missed uh, Caitlin there. We've got Caitlin and we've got Anna. Um, let's see, can, um, can you tell me who is accounting 116 ACC 116, please? Because I don't have a name on you. Could you please unmute yourself, whoever is labeled as ACC 116, so I can mark you in as attending class? If you don't unmute yourself, then I'm going to have to boot you out. You need to tell me who you are. I have everyone now. Let me just check the numbers. 21, 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Nope, I'm still missing someone. I apologize. I want to just make sure that I get everybody. Just quickly look at the names here, and I promise I'll let you go in just a minute. Chris, Chris. Uh, Julius, I was missing you. Okay, so we are all done for the day. Um, just as a reminder, the test is due tonight. You will not have to do watch that mini lecture because we covered this in our class today too. So you won't have to do this unless you want to watch it just for further understanding. Um, the only thing that will be due between now and next time would be to make sure you get the test done. And if I were you, I'd start maybe the um, concept overview video for chapter three, because Monday rolls around pretty quickly. And it's nice to cover a little bit of homework every night and get stuck with it and then not be able to finish it on time. This, um, you'll learn this material best if you split your studying and your homework up over several days rather than doing it at the last minute. Okay, so have a great rest of the day. I'll have an office hour at one o'clock today. You can always log in. Um, you go to the Zoom sessions link in your left menu pane and click on it and it'll show you class times as well as um, office hour times. Okay, have a good rest of the day. Thank, Thank you, you too.